Thank you. Welcome everyone to the People's Ward F, Captain Gilmore's uh, ongoing caucus meetings. This is the caucus before the caucus that takes place before the council's Monday caucus meetings. Councilman Gilmore likes to hold these meetings because um, the public is not allowed to speak at the Monday caucus. So in preparation for the Monday caucuses so that Councilman Gilmore can best represent uh, the People's Ward F, we like to hold our pre-caucuses public uh, with the people so that you guys can um, ask our questions to Councilman Gilmore and he can then relay them on Monday. On Wednesday, the community can speak publicly, but by then most of council people's minds are already made up. So we like to bring as much information um, to Councilman Gilmore's attention as possible um, during these Saturday caucuses. Um, you can reach more information about the caucus at our website, everythingwardf.com forward slash caucus. There we have the links to the agenda, links to previous notes from previous caucus meetings, as well as the link to join us live um, and learn more about the city's ongoing council meetings. You can see a link to previous council recordings here. So without further ado, we're going to review uh, the City Council agenda for Wednesday, November 29th, which takes place at 6 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Uh, first, we will review, we review um, ordinances. These are first readings that are being introduced. There will be no public speaking um, portion during first readings. Only second readings have public speaking portions in which the public can speak without having to sign up. Uh, then, so we'll re review first readings, then second readings, uh, which will be the public's last attempt to have a say so before these turn into law. Um, and then uh, those are the public speaking requests. And then lastly, we review uh, resolutions, which talks about how the city spends their money uh, with regards to contracts and um, public bids. Um, so the resolutions, um, th you will have to sign up to speak on any resolution. So if there's a resolution that you do want to speak on publicly on Wednesday, you will have to sign up on the city's website to address those publicly. So without further ado, let's start with first readings. We have Ordinance 23-118. And again, if, if anyone needs to um, slow down at all or uh, slow me down at all, feel free to raise your hand or something. Hey, like Erica. You, I can't see you or anything. I just see a gray screen. Sorry, I have my hand. Yeah, yeah, I don't. <laughs> it's like eerie, very eerie. Sorry, just a voice. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> All right. So the first reading, 3.1, is an ordinance amending Chapter 90, Animals, Article 3, Dogs and Other Animals, Section 12, Definitions, and Chapter 160, Fees and Charges, Section 14, Permits and Fees, Subsection E, Animals, to add and increase fees for animal control and animal shelter services. So Health and Human Services is seeking over um, the Liberty Humane Society services that were performed. We did not renew their contract. Um, so Carol, this speaks a little bit to what you were asking about. Earlier, yeah, with regards um, to their budget, I would like to, if I could, if with your permission, um, um, there is a couple of things on this particular ordinance to, that I would like to just hopefully have Councilman Gilmore question at the caucus meeting on Monday night, um, or at least make his, a statement about it if he if he agrees with what I'm going to say. Um, so it appears that this is basically um, a list, you know, an ordinance that codifies uh, fee costs, which, you know, it's not, it's really no big deal. It's just the cost of a lot of services. But there's one thing um, under 8F, under the chapter fees and charges. To me, it's on page three, actually. So it's kind of in the. Mm -hmm. So no shelter or pound fee. They strike that out. So it's um, chapter 160 fees and charges, 14 permits and fees, um, A, A through D. Do you see that? Yes, uh, I see eight is shelter and pound fees. Adoption fees, surrender fees, redemption fees, euthanasia fees. Yes, the right, correct, correct. Um, yeah, I think I think all these fees. You know, I just want to give you a background, and I won't take up much time. I 
I've been involved in animal welfare for over 20 years here in Jersey City. Um, I was there we, when we started the Jersey City Shelter in 2002. We were in there doing the work before uh, people were hired to perform those functions. Um, so I have a very innate you know, experience with it and I have followed animal welfare all these years. I formed my own nonprofit, Cat Rescue, done it for 20 years. So I'm one of the most articulated persons in the city about animal welfare. Um, that being that said, um, I just want to, oh, actually the, the thing I want to talk about is, it's on the next page. Where it's letter E and F and um, where is it? And G, mostly G is a concern. So letter E is disposal of deceased pets. Um, I think I, I really don't have an issue with it. The fee is very low. If a pet dies in a home, it, it, it's good that there is a way to dispose of it without great cost because you know a lot of people are in a bind. They don't know what to do with their animal. Um, the, but the main thing is under G, special service fees. Number three, trap loan, $50 deposit for up to seven days. I'm very concerned about having this available to the public that they can come and rent a trap for $50 because people are not always kind to animals. And if they don't want a particular animal in their community, you know, particularly cats, they could trap that cat and just drop it on the New Jersey Turnpike. Horrible. Cats are territorial. They live in a territory. This is their home. Whatever backyards or streets they live on, that's their familiar territory. You drop them in a, they're not wildlife, they're domestic animals. So my big concern is that should be st stricken from this. I would rather not have it in there. I have a feeling this was just copied from another you know, ordinance somewhere and just dropped in here without any great thought. But as an animal welfare person and concern for the welfare of the animals, whether they're living on the streets or not, giving a trap out to someone who just ha has, doesn't want the animal in the community or maybe trap the animal and do harm to it. You know, because that comes with a great responsibility, trapping an animal. So, and that th that person technically should be given certain requirements, like what animals they could trap. Going out. You know, so I think that, you know, I don't think it, I don't think it's, there's a lot of people that are gonna wanna come and get a trap, but as long as it's available, someone could. And I think we should remove it entirely. Yeah, that's I'll, my, I'll back, my opinion. I'll, I'll back you up on that, Carol. I'll back what? you up on that, Carol. This is Gina Davison. I'll back you yeah. up on that, Carol, and, and just say that anybody who's actually doing legitimate TNR, there's plenty of traps available. So if you're right. really part of an organization, you have no problem getting access to a trap when you need one. Um, so I just want to second that yeah. and say I agree. Um, absolutely. That, that is the main thing in this 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 particular ordinance uh, that was a fl red flag for me. Um, Thank you, Carol. I have notes with that um, regarding G3, the trap loan. Yeah, um, what is it? It's um, G3. I'm sorry, I'm just going back. Ordinance G 118 G3. G3 on the last page. Yeah, at the end of the document on the last page. Uh, okay. I, and, you know, I mean, I think he, sh he should bring up that, you know, you're going to give a trap out to strangers. But we don't know what intent they have, you know, so he should push back a little bit in the caucus and just say, hey, you know, let's just remove this. It's, it's not that important. Yeah. Um, I, I do have one other thing, Erica, and I, then I'm going to just shut up. Um, I'm going to, I'm working with a group of nonprofits here that, that are mainly cat rescues, all 501c3s. They work their butts off trapping cats, spaying, neutering, taking friendlies off the street and getting them adopted. 
And we've been very dis you know, disheartened with liberty over the last five years. And so we're welcoming this change, but we are concerned about the shelter and operations. And I know that Paul, and Stacy, you know, they, they've got some great things lined up. They're gonna have wellness clinics. They're gonna have a bed on staff, but nobody has really addressed publicly in any way how th things will be run. And we, we are big proponents of no kill. And no kill means that no treatable animal who has a medical condition of some kind or treatable animal or, or animal that might have a big behavior issue. Those are things that could be treated, that no treatable animal will ever be euthanized just for, you know, for medical reasons or, you know, behavior reasons, unless it's a vicious dog, we, you know, no kill agrees that any vicious animal dog like should you know would be acceptable for euthanasia so we want to propose an ordinance a resolution and for yeah. i want to we have we have there are ways to protect the there's no one advocating and protecting the animals that go in the shelter we just basically take it on good faith that everybody wants the best for the animals but most people including the government don't realize what goes on in these shelters and how how decisions are made. It's usually up to the shelter director. It's their discretion on whether animals live or die. And if they don't have a no-kill philosophy, there's a way to achieve no-kill, they can be very, you know, broad with their with their, you know, their killing of animals. So I would love to talk to Councilman Gilmore. Uh, about this off, offline. Um, so what do you recommend? What's the best thing I should do? We can definitely set up a meeting for you to speak with Councilman Gilmore and, and um, further regarding this. We can look into if, if we do have an order that supports um, like a, a, a no-kill resolution. Um, so we can look at, we can look into that to, you know, to say that, you know, the city also uh, believes in a no-kill resolution so that no Treatable animal will ever be used. Um, yeah, the, um, the the thing with this animal welfare committee that they created, um, this would only further the intent of wanting to give the best care to the animals. Meaning, the animals enter the shelter and they leave the shelter alive. This will focus on that part. Um, and um, I don't think there should be any, you know, just this disagreement about it. It's not, it, it wouldn't impact. Um, especially as, as the, the big thing is, about, is finding the funds, right? So that we're, so that that's not even a thought, you know, that we shouldn't, and the lack of funds would probably be the only thing that pushed for that type of um, resort. Um, yeah. Um, the, as long as we're doing our due diligence and making sure we, we're getting the, all the grant monies that are available to, um, you know, and we're not having to rely on all these charges. I know these fees are in place to make sure that we don't go in debt providing these services, um, but there should also be grants out there to make sure um, we're able to operate. Yeah. I mean, and, and doing a no kill shouldn't cost more because I know the intent is to, you know, have a veterinarian on staff, treat the animals that get sick, provide spay neuter, you know, um, it, it, it shouldn't, what we're gonna propose shouldn't impact the, any costs on the budget, but we can talk offline. I mean, I'll, I'll go over it with the councilman and you. At, so I'll just email you offline and we'll schedule. All right, thank you, Carol. Okay, thank you guys for being patient. <laughs> That's just number one, uh, 3.2. <laughs>
<laughs> no problem, is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, amending Section 332-5, One-Way Streets, and Section 332-9, Stop Intersections, to convert Bram Hall Avenue between Van Horn Street and Pacific Avenue into a one-way street in the westbound direction, and to convert Bram Hall Avenue and Woodward Street into an all-way stop intersection. Now, this is a, I'm going to bring it up on the map. This is a, an intersection that um, has needed attention for a while. There have been many um, accidents at Bram Hall and Pacific, uh, specifically as it relates to people trying to turn on to Bram Hall from Pacific Avenue. Um, and so what they're proposing is to make Bram Hall a one-way street um, so that those turns won't be necessary. Uh, so we're looking at... Um, so this is Bram Hall, and we would go all the way down to Pacific. And I believe they want to make this. Um, did they say westbound? Let's go back to it. Sorry. So yes, westbound. So um, westbound would be going. Uh, so I don't know if that solves the problem, though. Um, because westbound, would, you would still need to turn on to Bram Hall from Pacific. Um, so Travis said they worked with uh, Councilwoman Ridley's office on this. Um, Councilman Gilmore's office had been proposing um, some traffic solution here, like a raised intersection, because a lot of um, accidents happen at this intersection right here uh, because of this street. Um, allows for uh, blind spots, um, even though they put delimiters here on this corner, um, especially when there's large trucks parked here, you can't see traffic coming from Pacific. So a person's coming from Bram Hall um, and turning onto Pacific Avenue, there have been many traffic um, incidents here, also with people coming from Pacific turning onto Bram Hall. So they're proposing uh, one way going west um, but I feel like that would still cause uh, this thing that would stop uh, the problems that are happening here because people are getting caught up at this intersection, turning onto Bram Hall, um, not just turning from Bram Hall onto Pacific Avenue. Um, but just two weeks ago, there was an accident with someone coming, um, going down Pacific Avenue this way, and someone coming from Pacific. Um, if you can see my marker turning onto Graham Hall and they co collided right here. Um, so Councilman Gilmore is on, on the call. Um, what's your take on this? Um, have you spoken to the traffic office? She said, again, she said she's working at Ridley's office because of the new Ward A. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess in theory, it looks like they want the traffic to come from Pacific and then up Bram Hall. Uh, most of the accidents do stem from this oncoming traffic here, um, but I would have much rather like to see a more of a controlled intersection here, um, signal lights, speed bumps, or anything, um, because I don't know how, I mean, I guess the argument is if you're coming, if, if, if there's no down traffic from communal, I mean, because Pacific is a major intersection with traffic both ways. So their assessment is turn back the other way to Bram Hall. If there's no traffic coming from Bram Hall and all the traffic going to Bram Hall, that would alleviate the problem. Now, and I guess the bigger question is what if anything happens with parking? Do we lose gain or maintain neutral in parking? Mm. Let me go back to the end. Um, when I read through this, this was um, to deter traffic flow, like um, because yeah, people use it as like a it's a shortcut. People mm -hmm. use it as a shortcut, but it doesn't deter accidents. No, it's not gonna. No, I don't. I don't. You 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 need safety measures to deter accidents. Traffic patterns doesn't necessarily. I mean, to an extent they do, but more importantly, safety measures. Um, you need. It's a, that's a very busy intersection. And the fact that there's no speed bumps, lights, it invites, you know, people who drive fast on a, like trying to circumvent all that Garfield traffic, trying to get to the tunnel quickly. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can essentially easily uh, rectify the problem. Either put a put speed bumps across there where they have to slow down, um, or you put the uh, put a signal light, put a traffic light there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, in the meantime, um, I know uh, Councilwoman Ridley is out, but I'll talk to Gladys to see what um, it, what conversation they've had with the public with regards to this change, um, because I, I haven't heard anybody from the public reach out to us requesting it turn into a one way. Yeah, mm-hmm. We're requesting right. speed humps and stop signs, not changing direction. The conversation I had with, uh, well, I'm going to have with Jennifer and Barker, and I was like. We're not opposing anything, but like at the very least, um, I would imagine, well, I would hope that they consulted specifically all of those people on that, what's that Pacific end on that Bram Hall corridor, uh, because it's, it's going to affect them the most. Councilman, what is Bram Hall? It's into a one way street westbound direction. See, I don't do, is go up some. So it's from Wood. Okay, so it's from Woodward to Berry Lane. Um, yeah, I don't know how much if the traffic, if the traffic, if, if the issue. When I initially seen this, because I didn't look at it, I thought it was just they just want to change the traffic pattern from Pacific to what's that next block? Van Horn, the next block there. Um. All the way to Woodward. Yeah, no, it just this one right here. This block. No, that block. Go back. Uh the block you just passed. I think that's Van Horn. If the issue, because the issue is that the, the accidents are happening on Pacific. So you don't need to change a whole pattern from all the way down. The issue is here. So we so have they, to address this. Right. They're not addressing the accidents. They're addressing the cut through traffic. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, so, so we that, have, we're definitely going to have more dialogue, and um, they just have, they have to do some type of community outreach, giving these people in this area a chance to say, "Hey, like, why h- help them understand, um, help them understand why they're trying to go this route?" Because again, you can just if you're trying to alleviate accidents, and accidents are occurring on Bramhorn specific, then you address the issue from a safety perspective in that area. You have to go all the way to the park. They're, they're trying to address cut through traffic. They're not trying to address safety. Because uh, another issue is the unique thing about this being a two way here is that, um, let me see, what's no, this is Van Horn here. Um, you do, People don't want to go all the way around just to come, you know, just to get over here. So that's that's one of the uh that's the issues and that's why some people um some people like that, you know. So I mean we're gonna push that they have more community input. It's the first reading, so we have time to do a plethora of different things. That's the good thing about it. Okay. I'll go on to um three point three and ordinance supplementing chapter three thirty two vehicles and traffic article two, traffic regulations, amending section three thirty two. Dash nine stop intersections to designate the intersections of Dudley Street and Warren Street and Dudley Street and Washington Street until multi way stop controlled intersections. Like, I'm so jealous. Like, why do they get multi way stops and we can't get a multi way stop at Pacific? Um, but multi way stops are good, it slows traffic down. Uh, 3.4 is an ordinance supplementing chapter 332 vehicles and traffic article 3 parking standing and stopping amending 332-22 parking prohibited at all times and section 332-31 parking restrictions for street cleaning purposes on Bennett Street between EE Avenue and Clark Avenue. Is this the west side of EE? Yeah, this is in Ward D. Okay. So what are they, what, oh, they're trying to, oh, Bennett. I think Bennett was where the new construction was at. And they're going to uh they're going to be going there cleaning, it looks like. Go to um type up Bennett Street. I think that's Bennett Street is I think that's the new block um from a construction. Bennett and Eagy. Because Eagy is there, Bennett has to be that cut block. Oh, that's... Is it one of these side these new side blocks? Um, that's oh, 
Go to the vision, the video. Okay. It's right there. Then yeah. it is there. But what's what's it goes around the grill? Virginia. So Bennett's there too. So well, where is where what's the next go that go over some? Is that's it 440? That's four. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that new construction. That's why I know I wasn't going yeah. crazy. Yeah. Bennett, yeah, Iggy come down and then it hooks into Bennett. And then it kind of like breaks. So they put that new development down. So it looks like they uh redeeded that portion back to the city. Thus the reason that there it's it has to um be accommodated for public cleaning. Right. It's for street sweeping. Yeah. Okay. 3.5 is an ordinance supplementing chapter 332 vehicles and traffic. Uh, parking, standing, stopping, amending 332-31 parking restrictions, street cleaning purposes on Central Avenue between Route 139 and Newark Avenue. That's E. No, that's, that's, in, that's, that's D. Central and Newark. Central and Newark or North? Newark. Oh, Newark. That's C. 3.6 is a franchise ordinance. We love these, don't we? Uh, granting permission to Deval Patel and J. Shiri um, Mapani, pursuant of a resolution of planning board of City Jersey City under case P22-199, allowing the installation of stoops, bay windows, and planting beds, which encroach the extent, the extent into the right of way beyond the boundary lines of lot 33, block 8502, and are for the benefit of Lot 33, Block 8502, land now or formerly of Deval Patel and J. Shiri Mepani, and commonly known as 352 Pavonia Avenue. So they're making uh, improvements to the sidewalk. No, this, is it the sidewalk? Because they just uh, the window. Plant, plant beds and a, they have a bay window. So the bay window isn't on the sidewalk, it's raised, but it hangs over the sidewalk. But see, that's my issue. That, I mean, that doesn't have. It's more, it's more beneficial to the development, the, the developer of the establishment versus the public. Mm -hmm. And that's my major issue in a nutshell with these franchise ordinances. All right, if you want these extra amenities, you essentially have to pay for them. Um. Well, yeah, pay taxes on that added. Exactly. Absolutely. I think. How do you go about uh, at changing that? Oh, well, the thing is, typically, who's who's ever awarded and they they lead the charge um, as it relates to that um, Pavonia. I want to say that's Ward C as well. That looks like it's all. Is that no? That's probably that looks like E. Yeah, that's E. That's down. That's downtown. Like, yeah, that's a back idea. Um, but that's my like. I just typically I, I don't like franchise ordinance because it's it's like the public always lose and they paint this narrative. Oh, it's gonna beautify the area. It's going to help the sidewalk. It's going to well. That's that's good, but it's all beneficial to the developer and the people who's moving in said development. Because they want to entice people to come over, so they want things to look nice. Not like you're really doing us any favors. Right. They get better uh, sidewalk appearance, yeah. and they get yeah, they get to yeah, and and they charge higher rent. Money. Charge, charge higher rent. Okay. Exactly. And then what do we get? What what is what is the community getting? It's like we're selling out the community, giving them the yeah. benefits, and mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, we're still paying higher taxes. So, so that's what I want. I want to propose. All right, cool. We, if you want franchise orders, all right, you can do it. You can do it. But now, this amenities or these upkeeps is going to be assessed to the property value of the establishment, and that's how they get over. It's like, oh, we did it for the public. You know, it helps the public. So it's like, I, right, the public still own it, but we're really reaping the benefit of it. Right, all right, if you want it, you want to improve it, I will include it on the value of your property. Exactly, exactly. Instead of them saying, oh, well, it doesn't have a negative impact on the public. Well, just because it doesn't have a ne negative impact doesn't mean it also has a positive impact. They're not, we're not getting anything for giving this space away. Yeah. 
So we'll continue to work on that. But this was, what'd you say what word this was? That's E. Okay. So yeah, I know Solomon wanted to work on that um, uh, franchise uh, agreement too. Because just in, in general, we need to charge more for franchise. We need to charge for tra franchise organizations. All right, moving on to second readings. We'll fly by these. Um, they were first readings on the last uh, at the last meeting, um, but this time they there is opportunity for public input. There will be a public hearing on each of these second readings. Four point one is an ordinance of the City of Jersey City in the County of Hudson, New Jersey, approving the ex execution of an amended and restated water services franchise and service agreement between the city and the Jersey City Municipal Utilities Authority to increase the payments to the city. Yeah, I think the issue, my major issue with this is um, it's it's a lot of uncertainty in here. Um, and I'm going to ask again, because at last, last council meeting, I asked, does this have any bearing or any effect on the actual price that they will be charging a consumer, i.e. the city taxpayers? Um, they said no. Uh, it looks like what's happening here, though, it's looked like this is a way for the city to get in front of, it's kind of like a, almost like a prepayment of this big lump sum. My concern and what scares me with the big lump sum is that you pay, you pay all of this up front and you have the potential for disaster on a later end because this money is already here and it can be dispersed as they please versus them paying as they go. So um, that's really the major issue here. I know a lot of people have opposed opposed this, and I'm sure it's going to be a lot of people that come out to speak at the council meeting. Um, but I guess this is a way for the city to plug holes as it relates to municipal deficits. Um, but again, it's a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Um, so yeah, that's really the only second, the only second uh reading that actually jumps out to me of all of these uh second readings. And they just put that one back on there, right? It was a first reading and then uh, a couple yeah. months ago. Uh, yeah. 4.2 is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332 Vehicles and Traffic Article 9, Parking for the Disabled of Jersey City Code Designate and Reserve Parking Spaces at various locations throughout the city for persons with disabilities. Uh, 4.3 is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332 Vehicles and Traffic Article 2, Traffic Regulations Amending Section 332-5, One-Way Streets and Article 3, Parking Standing and Stopping, Amending Section 332-22, Parking Prohibited at All Times to Improve the Safety of the New York Avenue and Ravine Avenue Intersection and to convert Ferry Street into a two-way street between Webster Avenue and New York Avenue. 4.4 is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332 Vehicles and Traffic Article 3, Parking Standing and Stopping Amending, Section 332-22, Parking Prohibited at All Times on Ocean Avenue at Ferry Gardens. 4.5 is an ordinance authorizing the execution of a deed of easements for public access between Avenir LP and the City of Jersey City and the execution of a 30-foot setback easement agreement between Avenir LP and the City of Jersey City affecting Block 9301, Lot 30.01, aka 66 Broadway, and formerly known as uh, 1072 and 1075 Westside Avenue. 4.6 is an, an ordinance repealing ordinance 08-128 contractor pay to play reform ordinance in its entirety. Our pay to play um our pay to play ordinance was more strict than the state than the states, and then the state just rolled out something saying us municipalities pay to play ordinance cannot be stricter than the states. Um and I think um, the city put out something formally saying they don't agree that uh, it's law. Uh, 4.7 is an ordinance of the city of Jersey City in the Hud city in the county of Hudson, state of New Jersey, the city providing for the special emergency appropriation in the amount of $10 million to fund contractually required severance liabilities resulting from the retirement of employees of the city. Um, and I know this is probably going to be that, that 
four point uh four point seven, seven right? Yeah, they yeah. also have the the um the neighboring um resolution um ten point three is exactly linked to to this as well from the retirement of employees. So I would like to know where are we where are we on um making sure uh the employees that were paying out on retiring are like are factual like they still exist they're still alive. Um there was a news article that I read that said there was a good percentage of these people that were over 90 years old and likely deceased, but still on payroll. I don't think they're on payroll, uh, but they're probably on the insurance roll. Right, still on insurance. That's what I mean. Still on the insurance um, roll. That's a good question. I don't even know the check and balance uh, that they have with regards to that. I guess the bigger issue is well, I mean, that would be fraud if, if those people are taking someone's uh, retirement checks and using their benefits. Uh, but yeah, I just don't know. Um, I just don't know how they check that. And the, and the only major thing essentially is the disbursement of the funds because I can't imagine anyone using anyone's health care insurance that's 90-something years old and clearly they don't look 90. Um. But that's a good question. We should inquire um, with respect to what is the protocol? What is the policy? What do we have working to really understand that dynamic right there if people are still living? That's a good question. We could definitely propose that question. So that I, honestly, I just I just don't know. Oh, and then um, Governor Murphy just put a, a signed into law that you can still use uh, your deceased family's vehicle. Yes. Um, until it expires. Um, I, that's that's um, that's, that's, that's what I stop. And that should have been that should have been New Jersey is like the last in the in the world to do that. In fact, I don't even know. I don't even know how they like. Someone die. I don't think it, the motor vehicle don't trigger and say the person is dead and they get pulled over and they get dropped with like yeah that's that's more ceremony than any ceremonial than anything. But the same like are I'm wondering like do we have um we um, we probably don't have anything digital like we're not we're not at that level right where everything's everything's not digital yet even though it should be but it should trigger something like if there's a death certificate. Um, put into the system. It should mm -hmm. trigger anything associated with that with that person number, right? Same mm -hmm. thing with our insurance. Like we shouldn't have had. Why does the city of Jersey City have this issue where we have deceased people listed on our, on our insurance rolls? Um, but we just we just need to see what to make sure they are doing something about it and have a, some type of program to fix these issues. Um, well, in a nutshell, is to move at sort of speed. Um, unless it's something they really want done for a re-election campaign, then that thing gets steamrolled to mm -hmm. So on to our resolutions um, where we spend the money. 10.1 is a resolution authorizing insertion of a special item of revenue and appropriations in the calendar year 2023 municipal budget pursuant to NJSA 40A 44-4 uh, through 87. Uh, so this is um, a list of appropriations. Uh, so it's from coming from programs. So senior nutrition peer grouping, and it's going. Uh, it's going to the donate to ward A community initiatives. It's coming from the. So they take in five million. No, wait. So it's what is peer grouping? It's forty million in peer grouping. No, forty thousand peer grouping. Go down something like we missing some stuff because the amounts are not adding up. So yeah, keep going down. You're taking from okay. Here we go. No, this is the same. Is this? But this the funds are not because they got five million dollars going to. What is that? Go up some again? Five million. Yeah, block grant. From 
from but what I can't see where the five million coming from because of the the amounts are not adding up from now go so, to the bottom. Let me look at the email. Um what's the name? That's email. everything right there. Senior nutrition um is the last thing. So what did, what did, where are they getting five million from? Five million home improvement program is getting two million. And then HUD is getting another uh, grant funds that they are just now counting. Does it seem, they seem like things that are covered by grants? But what I'm saying is, even it doesn't matter where they come from. Like it, this is a balance sheet; they have to balance out. Where I need to see where the money is coming. I don't see where the money is coming from. Everything on the left hand side of the balance sheet. On the bottom, there should be a total of how much money is being moved to all of these places on the right-hand side. Now, what I'm saying is I don't see anything. Uh, go all the way down. Yep. Uh, this is uh, the summary. Oh, here we go. There's the, uh, there we go right here. Now they show you here. I have to separate. This is from okay. Kyle Graves. So it's coming from all of these. Oh, see, this is why this is important. They're taking three hundred and fifty thousand from sanitation. They're taking one point four. Is this the same? This is not this. This the same sheet. These are the. Uh, These uh, are the attachments. This is the appropriation transfers. This is what Kyle emailed us. This was not uh, attached to. Yeah, see the thing with this sheet right here is is speaking to two different resolutions at one time, but he just gave us a whole overall picture. You see, to total appropriations adopted. Um. You, you see this number, then you see quality of life and law, the money being taken, but the document we just read doesn't speak to that. Yeah, this is speaking to all of them. because there's five yeah. different But this, they can't do, they should present a separate spread, a, a, a balance sheet for each of the resolutions. You're giving me a whole balance sheet and then you're breaking down the appropriations and different resolutions. Yeah, because we have all these yeah, why are they broken 10, down 10.5 a resolution uh -huh. authorizing yeah. calendar year 2003 appropriation transfers to the department of infrastructure then you have another one for the department of administration then you have one for the municipal budget then you have one for the clerk's office department of finance housing economics and then you give me one balance sheet with all of that on now, if, if, if I don't know business, I'm confused about this. So the general public is definitely confused. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a separate balance sheet for each of the resolution. And that way you can see the picture that's being painted because here you just see money being moved from point A to point B. Now, people will want to wonder, why are you giving public safety another $3 million? Right, but when it's all of this stuff is bunched together, so now you got to really look through all of this. So let's say, see from here, okay, we going office of public safety, um, SW. Okay, so, operating expenses seven hundred thousand. Okay, so they did separate it. He just didn't do a good job. All right, so this 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 gap is a is separate. So you separation. see how okay. How here, eighty thousand over here, twelve thousand over here, twelve thousand over here, one nine, uh, one hundred ninety five thousand over here. So he separated by lines. He just uh, he could have done a better right, job. So they're taking. So at the bottom is public safety. So three point six million to public safety, and they're taking a million dollar from municipal clerk's office. So like. I I definitely have a question about this because all year long they won't even let us order no paper. And you telling me we had a million dollars extra in our in our municipal budget now and now we get we're giving out to public safety. Like we don't get to say we want to give it to recreation instead, or we want to give it to health and human services instead for their new um RFP like they that they said they had no money for. Exactly. And they uh, and okay, I, I don't want to get to the other part where they're getting this money for this tomahawk type of thing. But even with that, there's no input, which we had discussed with the public safety with spending money by helping to finance this mobile response to crisis thing. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. 
I don't get it. I mean, you know, it's just like random spending without any input from the community. You know, it's just like now they can find the money, but for what he decides it's for. Yeah. Or whoever, whomever, you know, and, and to me, uh, basically even putting that resolution on the floor to me is not even acceptable because of how we ended the previous meeting. Is at least trying to collaborate with something if they have money and they're spending it and what direction are they putting it, you know? Because the Tomahawk even that uh training program which they had implemented they were going to use in twenty twenty and they stopped it and now they're bringing it back, but still no input from the community with the uh crisis intervention training because that training I looked at it didn't cover crises or whatever. It covered, you know, I guess uh shootings in regard to that, but not implementing any type of social de escalation and they're giving them money, but they have no money for collaborating with uh the community and different things. I don't know. I just that's ridiculous. I think they throw away our money and think, you know, it's just okay. Just put a band aid on something. I don't know. Erica, did they start the training I know the um, OE is for operating expenses. What's SW again? Um, uh, because they're taking, they're taking twenty thousand from communications administration operating expense and they pushing it to communication administration SW. I forget what those acronyms for, and then you're taking treasury and debt sixty thousand. Then you're transferring it to administrators, business administrators' office emissions. I mean administration for sixty thousand. Then you software. have software. SW is software. It's software. Mm -hmm. And so, our treasury and debt management finance. They so there's sixty thousand dollars that they were supposed to spend in software that they didn't. Architecture and infrastructure, twelve thousand. They were supposed to spend in software. They didn't. Accounts yeah. and control find out. This is ninety five thousand dollars. Like, so why are they not spending this money that they said that they needed, right? Because this is why, again, why taxes also went. You know, we could have saved. Why? Why is there this overflow? Um, we have recycling um, sent us a justification letter. Um, and then automotive sent us a justification letter, but that was it. No one else sent justifications for their overflow or their need of um, th these millions of dollars in appropriations. Okay, yeah, then uh, let's see, public safety here, they go on. Uh, let's see, this doesn't make sense. They have director's office slash public safety. Then they have Police slash public safety. So they move it. Fire. It's coming from fire. No, it's 50,000 is coming from the director's office. Then another. 1.4 million. But you said SW. I don't think SW is software? Software. No, I, don't, I can't be. If OE is operating expense in a spreadsheet software, I can't. Like, why would that be software? Uh, let me double check. Let me see. It's um, oh, forget goodness gracious. Would they be trying to do nine one one or something like that? I don't get it. Uh, I I I don't know. Mm. And if they're doing, if they're trying, isn't there a part where that should be capital expense too? Depending on the soft, if it if it's truly software, there should be some of that. Like I would think they'd be separating this into operating expense and capitalized. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm. I forget what it. I forget what that uh, abbreviation is. I got to double check. Um, Cap, I mean, I've heard it referred to as capex. I feel like software is a mixed bag, right? If yeah, that's what I was about to say. I don't think it's. I don't. I don't think it's uh software here. It came up as software when I I looked it up just as a general mm -hmm. like what does that mean on a balance sheet? And it says software? Yeah. Someone said it's probably seasonal work. 
No, it's really no season. They better not be giving no two point five million dollars in November to public safety for no seasonal job. I forget. Exactly. Yeah, that's what that is. It's in the notes. I'll double check. We can move on. Um, I mean, it's problematic in a nutshell, whatever the creation is, to, to be transferring all of this money in spite of everything else that's it's just irresponsibility on these, these directors that constantly go over budget every single year. Even with increased budgets, they're going over budget. So that stuff they feed us at the beginning, oh, we ask every department to cut their budget by 15%, only for us to turn around at the end of the year to put the money back. So in essence, they really didn't do what we asked them to do. And if they really are spending all these different buckets of so on software, you know, if there's a big upgrade happening that we don't know about, or if there's new systems being put in place, there needs to be a centralized authority that's driving all of that. Because if you start to if you start to upgrade software in different departments and it's not all con the, the connectivity between them is not salaries and wages, salaries and wages, salaries and wages. OK, that's what it is. That makes a lot more sense. So now go back to the balance sheet. So okay. salaries and wages, you're taking. Let's go back to this balance sheet. OK, so you're taking. See, this is the issue right here I have. You're taking, wait up, where is, let me see, hold on. You're taking salary and wages from the director's office and salary and wages is from fire to go salary and wages to public safety. That should have already been ironed out in your initial budget. It should have already been ironed out. It's one thing to take away operating expenses. All right, we didn't use all the money that we were projected to use, or we used more than what we were projected to use. But you're taking salary, and that means you're taking manpower from one entity or diminishing it at one entity only to increase it there. What's the justification for that? What's the reason for that? Traffic and parking. 400,000. We don't have no traffic enforcement in the city at all. Right. Why are we taking from it? And, and oh, that's that's the thing. Thing. Someone brought up a good point that they need to prepare for snow. So why would they be taking all of these from salary and wages from sanitation? You can save this 1.3 or 1.2 million and have that um, for potential uh, for snow to happen. Yeah, this, uh, I mean, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. And then automotive maintenance, like why? <laughs> like $300,000, we just bought new cars. Well, what are we maintaining? <laughs> Hello, like, everybody. I know this budget. Hey, How do they really need $300,000? Hey, Chris, 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 Chris just jumped on. Chris, you want to say something? Oh, yeah, I mean, like normally, like folks start off at the beginning of the year with a budget. Uh, at least 20% less than or, or I mean they say the 20% less than what they had previous and then uh, what they do is you know like during times like they try to make these shifts inside of the budgets based off of you know like different things that could come up so uh, you know like um, operational uh, expenses but like if you see a lot of stuff moving from uh, from a uh, from you know sanitation and from uh, OE uh, 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 Office of Emergency and DPW. Remember, all these folks operate all together during times of um, like inclement weather and, and 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 things like that. And so uh, the directors probably will come up to you and say, "Well, you know, we're about to order uh, a couple of more snow plows uh, because you know we have about." um 20 cars right now that's not fixed remember like you purchase all your your equipment from like ford and like you like you purchase equipment every year so like they're probably gonna come to you with a um you know saying that you got to purchase more equipment because what you have is kind of like obsolete like the, 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 every year you know they spend money on equipment every year like 
30, 50 machines a year, you know? But so, the thing is, they're taking, they're, take, they're taking that very money that you're talking about. I guess they, they must think that we're not going to have any bad weather because they're moving from DPW sanitation. They're moving one point, whatever that amount is. Like, they're moving it, and they're putting it on the other side to um, recycling, Office services, five hundred thousand. Uh, gasoline, one hundred and fifty thousand. So I guess they're they're projecting yeah, that they're saying. not going to have a bad summer. I mean, a bad winter. Yeah, yeah, and they probably uh fueling well, cars understand. and stuff like that. But it's I not like they're moving in between. One, the issue is is really with the with the public safety quality of life. You're taking two hundred thousand away from public safety public safety quality of life salary and wages to give it to public safety police or communications and technologies and then traffic like that. I would like to know what, what are the difference in um, job uh, requirements from the quality of life public safety department and the general public safety department because our quality of life is, is not at 100%. So we don't need to be taking any money from there. Uh, and OSHA too. What is the public safety OSHA? They're taking seven hundred thousand from that, and, and you're taking one point four from the fire department. Like, are they are they fully staffed? They must be fully staffed and and happy. And they don't they did they have like fifty percent less fires this year? That they have this gross like amount that's left over like this is this is no but this, this public safety fire is coming from salary and wages right that's what i'm saying like did they not need to hire all the firemen that they thought they wouldn't that they were going to need okay. all right, well, well we pretty much covered uh through seven yeah um ten, ten, one, ten, ten, one, ten, three. Uh, ten four, ten five. It's all the way through ten eleven. The uh, all the way to what? Uh, 11, ten yeah. ten is the last of the appropriation transfers for the Department of Public Works. Well, what, 10, 11. But ten uh, two is a resolution accepting the best practice inventory questionnaire. Uh, but that's one. Of, that's a different one than the actual uh budget transfers. So this is. A resolution of the Jersey City Municipal Council accepting the best practice inventory questionnaire. So they, they're going to create a, is the questionnaire on there? Is it attached? Uh, oh, it's from the DCA. Yeah, there they go. They're, they're attached. Okay. So we could go to uh 1011. Outstanding canceled checks. So there weren't any just outrageous amounts here. I think this was like one of the biggest ones. And these are checks that weren't cashed. How much was it in total, though? 72. 171. Okay. All right. We can keep going. 10.12 is a resolution authorizing the cancellations of real estate taxes on properties owned by New Jersey Transit pursuant to GS NJSA 54. Okay. 10.13 uh, is a resolution granting veteran exemptions from local property taxation pursuant to NJ 54. 10.14 is a resolution authorizing the city of Jersey City to cancel the tax sales certificate owned by NJNH Funding Corp. affecting 23 Belvedere Avenue, Unit 3. So in the 10.15 is a resolution of the Municipal Council admonishing the state of New Jersey for the passage of the Elections Transparency Act, which prohibits the municipalities from imposing more restrictive pay-to-play laws. 10.16 is a resolution recognizing November as Veterans Appreciation Month in Jersey City. Thank you all for your service. 10.17 is a resolution honoring and uh, Alicia Vega for her accomplishments and service to our nation. 10.18 is a resolution honoring John J. Jack Hallahan as a 2023 Veteran Day honoree for his service to our nation. 
10.19 is a resolution honoring SSG Regla Flores, Regla Flores as a 2023 Veteran Day honoree for his service to our nation. 10.20 is a resolution honoring Richard F. Dwyer on the occasion of his retirement for PSENG. Um, he's given us a lot of information. We're going to create a page on our website specifically for um, PSENG um, resources because um, he's given us a lot over the years. Um, a resolution 10.21 is a resolution renewing a one year open ended contract with W Health LLC for the provision and delivery of quality meals for the senior congregate nutritional lunch program managed by the Division of Food and Nutrition. 10.22 is a resolution authorizing the acceptance of the New Jersey Office of Cancer Control and Prevention's grant as awarded by the Bergen County Department of Health Services Office of Health Promotion. 10.23 is a resolution authorizing the Jersey City Department of Recreation and Youth Development to accept a $1,000 donation from the Nation Council of Behavioral Health. 10.24 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City Department of Administration to accept the award from the SIN allocation from the National Opioid Settlement, which is that for $88,000. 10.25 is a resolution. Um, uh, just while we're on that opioid settlement, um, I just want to make sure, uh, put on record, that I want to make sure we follow opioid settlement funds and make sure, because that can also go towards mental health initiatives, um, drug addiction. Like we we should ask um, uh, Stacey Flanagan with Health and Human Services. I agree. If there is an opportunity to use funds from all of these opioid, opioid settlements to use um, with the services that are provided to persons with um, mental disabilities, because addiction is a disability um, or a health related issue. Um, 1025 is a resolution fixing the dates and times for the caucuses and regular meetings of the municipal council. So we'll be putting all these dates on our community calendar um, for the year 2024. Um, the first meeting being Tuesday, January 2nd at 6 p.m., the reorganization meeting, and then the first caucus being January 8th with the council meeting followed by January 10th. 10.26 um, is a resolution authorizing the purchaser agent, purchasing agent to sell various motor, motor vehicles at public auction. 10.27 is a resolution supplementing the manual loading Manual of Loading Zone Designations of the City of Jersey City designating a loading zone at 492 Monmouth Street. 10.28 is a resolution authorizing the City of Jersey City's Office of Diversity and Inclusion to accept the 2023 DEI Community Impact Grant Award from Wild Care of New Jersey. That award is for uh, $4,000. 10.29 is a resolution authorizing the business administrator to execute a discharge of mortgage encumbering 90 Dwight Street. 10.30 is a resolution of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City authorizing the subordination of city's mortgages encumbering five monitor streets. 10.31 is a resolution authorizing an amendment to the contract with HMR Architects in connection with the with schematic design, design development, construction documents, and construction administrative services for city called fire suppression system. 10.32 is a resolution authorizing an amendment to a contract with FC3 Architecture and Design in connection with the construction and administration services for Johnston Avenue Library Project. 10.33 is a resolution authorizing an amendment to a contract with FC3 Architecture and Design in connection with uh, services for 394 Central Avenue Senior Center. 10.34 is a resolution ratifying the award of contract as Homahawk Strategy Solutions for tactical training for ESU sustainment and continuing education training for Jersey. Oh, okay. This is the one that's that where, want. yeah, that's the one I really wanted to talk about because um that's the thing with the Tomahawk. And my concern is that even though they're putting this on the table, when we left that last caucus meeting and we we're getting the committees together, I know this is a CIT training type of the Tomahawk, great name, Tomahawk by the way, um, we were supposed to talk with the police. I, I, I thought that was the understanding of us mobilizing this committee, which we're establishing. We had our one meeting, uh, but we haven't um, finalized. But the one recommendation was the fact that we wanted to work with the police department in regard to de-escalation with social workers or hiring a staff or something as they're allotting this money. Because that CIT training, which is, I think, it's five days. It's on site. If you read the uh, Tomahawk uh, uh, resolution or whatever the RFP, 
and I'm just not a please right now uh, with, in terms of um, even, I know they maybe this is just ongoing that they're doing, but uh, it was put up in 2020, they didn't, uh, didn't utilize it. And right now, and we're talking about de-escalation and um, crisis intervention. Uh, my concern is when we when we left it off was that we were going to uh, work with um, the uh, safety department, well, you know, the director in regards to what our concerns was with the committee uh, and Jersey City together. So uh, I don't know why this is on the table. He hasn't even spoken to anyone in terms of this. So you guys had, you know, initially you guys had been in conversation with the director about um, about the no, no. We remember when we, the last meeting we were concerned because when we spoke at the um, council meeting and when we looked at that previous um, RFP and they kept talking about the collaboration with the police department. And oh, just okay, yeah, they never collaborated. Okay, yes. And the concern was, and this is the thing that uh, that I'm, I'm going to stress is the fact that uh, I'm. This, I think people think that it's like against the police department. It's not about that. It's about the training and even the fact that I've, I've, as I started reading, it's very upsetting to me looking at it in terms of how well it works with a social worker working along or somebody that's equipped with de-escalation, not just the clin clinicians that do the um, psychiatric work, but this format of de-escalation with the de police department because even with the 988, or the 911, I did not call 911, I called the crisis center, even with the 988, if there's a problem, you're going to still call the police department to come in at some point, okay? If, if there is a problem, and usually when the people in crisis, and I'll say this as an example, after my nephew's murder, I had two instances, one person with a dementia and another young man was having a problem, and both times the police department showed up, and one with the teenager, they had rifles out, and this was in Bayonne, where they had to ride together. And what I didn't see is anyone uh, there to de-escalate in terms of, and if you look at different programs with social workers and um, other uh, employees that they could hire to work along with the police department within the uh, this crisis intervention training, uh, I think it's important. I mean, uh, I you know, I think they should review before they just give out the money. I mean, it's 45. I don't know if they got all this money and this little bit is going into the CIT training, which yeah, came up they, in 2020. Uh, they have a, a contract with Tom Hawk. Um, this looks like it's um, because they, they have didn't a, take it. Ahead. This they didn't like take it in 2020. Remember? Okay. In 2020, um, in no, August no. of 2020, but they have um because Tomahawk Tomahawk does that uh oh my what's that training they do it was like uh they did it at over here at the health building. Right, the live shooter, active uh, shooter training situation type of stuff. Yeah. Um so they have different uh how do you say the different categories of different okay. type of trainings that they have. Okay. So this looks like it's so saying for tactical training. So do you think, Councilman Gilmore, do you think that this is sort of like their business as usual training, which yeah. I would argue, I would argue uh, that they probably don't need so much of the tactical training and they obviously need more of the other kinds of training around de-escalation and such. Yeah. So my contention would more be like, hey, is this your, you know, is this your regular scheduled, you know, tactical training? And if so, you know, should we consider including in that training some of the de-escalation work or does that need to be a separate a separate contract with a separate group? But but why do we need more tactical training right now for our police when they're already too tactical? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's what the argument have to shift for um, because we've been investing in tactical training. I'm putting it there for now. Some time now. We haven't really You shouldn't have me for the for sensitivity training for anything of that sort right there. Um so I, I guess and that's why it's important for them to spell out what the relationship of the JCPD would look like. Um so I was a little taken aback by the guy saying that they haven't worked out what it would look like. How do you get a con? They don't. You, they don't. 
How do you agree to a contract you don't know what the stipulations are going to be? All of that should have been ironed out um, immediately. Uh, but we, we, I think we have a meeting coming up next week as it relates to uh, someone said, where is Director Shea? I don't, Director Shea, I, I don't, that's what, that's the thing. Director Shea needs to be at the table meeting with whoever the, the director of Health and Human Services, whoever is creating this RFP, the community to see how does this how does this de-escalation training is mental health intervention pro like how is it going to work? Um for so long, everyone is just kind of like, all right, we think we should do this. And it's just they're just not inviting all of the parties who have stake in it. Um, so I'm gonna follow up. We do have a meeting next week or well, the week coming up as it relates to um talking about the RFP, talking about these type of services. Um, Catherine Gilmore, excuse, yeah. excuse me, Catherine Gilmore. Um, it's mental health and it's behavioral uh, uh, health also because when we're talking about this crisis in intervention, uh, when people are in crisis, besides the mental health, it's a totally different mind mindset in terms of just how angry or whatever is going on. Even if somebody's in a, a drunken stupor or it's addiction or whatever, their mental state is totally on a different level than when we're talking about, you know, um, the escalation. And it is clinical besides, you know, it's a social work. And um, so it's not just, um, uh, it's mental health, definitely. But the other parts of the crisis is that it's people in dementia, dementia who get very angry, agitated. And, you know, they're, and they're just as lost as someone with bipolar in terms of where they are, what they're thinking, how they react, you know, not responding aggressive, agitative, you know, so those same situations can happen with people in a crisis. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, okay, so our, our community is in crisis in terms of a variety of things. Teenagers going through different things where you you uh, you can stop something, but at that time when they're agitated, de-escalation um, and how you handle it is a really important um Thing that you know that mindset has to be there or people who understand it i mean besides just the clinician social workers are different things you know so it's mental health but it's people in crisis in, in different levels thank you all right definitely right. i would challenge the um council to make a pact that they don't um uh, vote on any type of training for police until police have an answer to the mental health crisis and have agreed to work with Health and Human Services to provide, because it, I've highlighted some things um, as part of this training. To, line item 24, behavioral observation analysis. Line um, not, uh, 10, crisis management. Um, you know, so there's things, there's a part of this training. Well, the, only, the only thing about that is um, police is going to need training in some of the other areas like the mass shooting, the hazmat, the active shooting crime. So that's that's the thing with um with basically saying, listen, we, we don't want to hear any of this unless this is included. Um, the conversation should be along the lines of why this is a priority, this is also a priority, so they should be married together, or if not together, at least consecutively, one right after the other. Um, more funds should be able to be come to yes. come from the public safety budget to answer this crisis because eventually they're going to get called, like, we're going to be using their resources, so they should be having to pay for the. For well, they've made the argument in the past that they needed more police officers to address these situations. Now we're essentially saying that we have the data that suggests an alternative route may be more beneficial. So with this data and what you're thinking that we need police officers and the data suggesting that we don't, why don't we divert those funds or reallocate those funds to... Um, to deal with these crises? Because when you're talking about mental health, you're talking about it's a wide spectrum of things, right? Someone cannot necessarily be going through psychotic episodes. They could just be going through anything and get outraged, right? And then people who need, people have to be trained to deal with those type of individuals, right? It's just not your typical and, and, police approach. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And I think there are social workers and different people that can come along with that, that are trained with the police officers or in, in uh, because I think that's it. We can't expect them to be psychiatrists. We can't expect them to even understand the language of what the people are going through unless yeah. they're trained for it because it's, it's a difficult moment. And I think police are trained to react. Okay. They're trained to, you know, and I think that the de-escalation of patients and the thing is, I, I look at New York. We saw in New York where they would wait how many minutes when somebody shot and killed someone. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And they didn't kill them. Okay. But when they're dealing with this mental health, and if you look at these stats on it, 50% of the people with mental health wind up being dead. Yeah, and we're not going to talk about the percentage in terms of racial divide. So, ridiculous. and they find with social workers and other things added to it, uh, do help. Mm hmm. All right, let's go uh the next one, E, and then I guess the rest of them are yeah. so with the There's only um ten more. Um less than ten more. Ten more thirty five three resolution ratifying contract to award Nadler Mobile LLC uh Nadler modular for the lease of a modular trailer so accommodate staff members due to mold conditions in the basement of the first floor of the East District Police Precinct. 10.36 is a resolution ratifying the award of professional services agreements. So why do they have to, uh, why don't they just come to the new public safety building instead of renting? Uh, oh, because those, um, that's the East District. Eventually they I think they're selling that district and they're building another one down there. The issue with that is if we have police officers that's supposed to be in the vicinity of the East up at the public, it's counterproductive, right? Um, because the, the response time will diminish, well, increase essentially um, for them to get all the way back over there. So they have these trailers uh, up until they either rectify the mold situation or the new precinct is built. Whatever that's one true. comes first. 10.6 is a resolution ratifying the award of professional services agreement with the law firm Mick Manimon, Scotland and Bowman LLC to represent the city of Jersey City and the city Jersey City Planning Board in the matter of LHN um, versus the city of Jersey City LHN. Which uh, LHN? What property is this regarding? Yeah, go, oh, LHN owner. City of Corporation Council, uh, the estimated amount of the contract exceeded. So, no, that ain't what's it? But, um, yeah, I wonder what, what this is. Oh, let me see, go back. Oh, wait, no, go ahead, keep going. Fred Guy for Hudson County, exec. So, Oh, these are their donations. Uh, those are oh those oh those are donations. They have to disclose yeah. the donations whenever they so oh. this law firm is a donor, but what is the lawsuit about? Oh, that this the law firm. This who the law firm donated to? Yeah, they have to disclose uh, their the, the, oh. they have to disclose uh, any. Mm -hmm. Financial uh, connections. This is like the time you get to do all them firms donate. Oh yeah, they better donate or they ain't gonna get no contract. <laughs> Sick. Uh, but yeah, so we can send an email to see what e uh, specific um, because it just says. It's the Jersey City Planning Board being sued by LHN. I'm wondering if this is um um cannabis. Uh, is this one of the cannabis uh, suits? Not, I don't know who. I don't know what the abbreviation. They don't even have the name of the place, so I don't know. Hold on, hey guys, hey, good morning. I, that might be the developer from off of Glenwood because he's suing planning for rejecting. Oh, okay. Wow. Nine application. The Brooklyn-based company uh, for development of West Side Avenue has definitely to do Glenwood. Yeah, it's off of West Side. Okay, all right. Okay. And the next ones, all of these, uh, all of these are lawsuits. These look like um, these are settlements. Um, Donna Garvin, how much is that for? Sixty thousand uh, dollars. Joseph Drayton. 
is eighty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. And what's the next one? Quebec is for one hundred and seventy-five thousand. The Nia Hicks is for ninety-five thousand. And then Resolution ten point forty-one is providing local support for okay. Apple for retail cannabis. Yeah, all the rest of them are cannabis. Yes. Well. And Retreat NJ. All yeah. right, yeah, that is it. And then we have deferred uh, or tabled ordinance yeah. resolutions. So, um, does anyone have any other questions, comments, or concerns as it relates to anything we went over or anything else you would like to discuss? Um, go for it. I do want to let everyone know that the um, budget hearings are currently underway. Um, the, our newsletter went out this morning with a link to the uh, recording of the Health and Human Services budget hearing. Um, so I'm looking forward to watching that, to seeing what she talks about with regards to um, mental health initiatives that HHS is, is funding in 2024. Um, so with this link, you can also reach the other um, recordings of the budget hearings. Um, the other budget hearings are going to take place, re, are going to restart on Tuesday, the 28th at 10 a.m. with HEDC. Wednesday is the tax assessor and the public works. Thursday is the Department of Public Safety. Um, starting at 1 p.m. Monday, December 4th is the mayor's office and cultural affairs. Uh, Monday is also Department of Recreation, Library, and Infrastructure. And then Tuesday, the December 5th, is the City Clerk's Office and the Department of Finance. So Healthy Human Services, again, they already went on the 21st, uh, uh, in addition to the Department of Administration and Human Resources and the Department of Law. They all went last Tuesday, and you can see that recording um, made available um, on YouTube. And also, um, I, I do want to challenge everyone that's on a Zoom uh, to invite one person to the next community caucus, which will be in another two weeks. Uh, just invite one person because I'm a, a firm believer that the more we begin to advocate and be unified in our voice, the more we can get things done. Um, so I challenge you guys to just invite one person. It's 14 here now. Hopefully Absolutely. next week we can get to about 28. I know a lot of people read these things after they have been re uh, watched, excuse me, after they have been recorded. But, you know, we want to make sure we as informed and transparent and cohesive as possible as, as a ward. Um, so with that being said, I do want to thank everyone for tuning in. Thank everyone for spending their early Saturday with me. Um, and enjoy the rest of your day and happy holidays. Councilman, uh, can I make a comment real quick? Yes. In regards to the lawsuit, right, with, I don't know if that's the lawsuit or not, but for 126 Glenwood Avenue, uh, I believe that the developer was looking for a variance, and I, I think they needed a variance. Uh, variances can be rejected, plans can be rejected, um, but because more development is coming up here, you, you know, you, your office may want to look into that because you know, this may allow this developer to set a precedence where, you know, developers are just suing if they can't build what they want. It's the difference between as of right, but if you need variances and it's rejected, then you have to go back to the drawing board. And I, I believe that this uh, developer just wants to build what he wants and to be allowed to sue, I mean, this this should have been shut down by the law department before it even started because of, you know, the variances asked. I think they wanted more height and all types of stuff. Okay. So that's, you know, just, you know what I mean? All right. And that's it. All right. Well, guys, enjoy yourself. Uh, see you later. Thank you. I'm posting the link to the newsletter in the chat for those who um, wanted a copy of it. Thank you, Erica. I'm so sorry. I don't know how I haven't managed to get on that list yet. I apologize. Oh, 
no problem. You can um, uh, join uh, via everythingwardf.com. I posted the link in the chat. And you can always just always, always just send us an email as well and just say, hey, add me to the list. We try to, any email that we receive, we add to our newsletter list. Um, if you click any button on our website and sign up for any list, you get added to the newsletter list. Um, so you may have been on one of those lists um, and maybe something was misspelled. No, but I... I didn't realize the sign up was on the homepage. I think I keep going to deep links on everythingwardf.com. I apologize. I see it now. Thank you, Erica. Our pleasure. Anything else, anybody? All right. Thank you all. We will see you um, at the city council meeting on Wednesday. And have a nice day. 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 Have